It's the Freestyle Universe Radio Show on Ember Radio Live.com. Welcome to the Freestyle Universe Radio Show right here on EmberRadioLive.com where I have a super exciting show for you this evening. I'm so super stoked about this one. Um, of course, I'm coming to you from the heart of New York City and the place to be, Queens, of course, is where I hail from. Um, you know, I got a little Brooklyn in me and a little Uptown, but I digress. Ain't no place in the world like New York City to me. I've been many places you know, visiting and whatnot. And I, you know, I have some Philly in me, of course, and there's the Vegas. But my heart and soul will always be here in New York. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I mean, I- I'm not dissing you where your, your hood or your place or whatever. But for me, there's no place like New York. I, I, I'm like a fish out of water when I'm not here. And You know, uh, everything starts from here and, you know, I'm not, you know, okay, I'm not trying to down everybody else's thing. Like I said, New York is a place that a lot of stuff starts from and, you know, a lot of the legends come from here and a lot of the people that really make things happen and set trends and whatnot. And that will lead me into who we're celebrating tonight. And he also hails from Queens, you know. He is somebody, I think that it's overdue that we give him some recognition. You know, he started as a DJ. You might know a little bit of his history that he was with the Dynamic Rockers crew. And um, he's really known for his editing and remixing. Um, He's done a lot of stuff with the mainstream legends. You know, you name it, he's he's worked with them. Um, And, you know, but I, I could say this. We had him too. Freestyle had him too, baby. And, and he has made his mark in the freestyle universe. <laughs> and right now I'm going to give you a little taste of him. Um, if I haven't stated his name, it's the wonderful one and only Omar Santana. Here's a little taste of Omar Santana.
how about that Omar Santana? He has that thing. He likes to make noise. He, you know, I can see how he got into the techno and, and whatnot because he's really, really into noise. I mean, I, I don't know how, how else to say it, but he's into the, the noise. And, you know, he's one of the most talented and um, infamous editors in the freestyle music world when he was doing the freestyle. And I hope that, you know, somewhere out there, some of you that are listening who are hoping to make your mark in music, um, don't let anything stop you. Because, you know, I'm sure Omar didn't know that he was going to rise to such success. Um, one of the reasons I, why I have gotten into doing what I do and, and pushing the freestyle and being freestyle universe and, um, you know, having the passion that I do is that I, hopefully I will inspire you to be great, to go out there and make more freestyle, to um, give this uh, genre the, the recognition it deserves, you know, to push it through to the next level, um, you know, get the next generations involved. Um, because I really think that it's a genre that needs to be recognized just like rock and roll or country or, you know, they have their Hall of Fame and they whatnot. And so, you know, this is something that if I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't put so much effort into. And, um, you know, it, it's you who, who make, can make the mark. Uh, you have a talent. I'm sure that there's a lot of Omars out there. Carlos Barrios is out there. Um, ready to be discovered. Don't ever let anything stop you. I hope that you know you could be somebody as great as my wonderful producer, uh, the DJ Smoke. Of course, you know he's par excellence in my book. So you know, be that next person who inspires, who becomes a legend, and you know, just enjoy yourself. If you're doing what you love, you know, it's like. Wow, I'm getting paid to do what I like Or, you know, you're living that dream So many people wish to have And I say, be determined Let nothing stop you, no one stop you Don't be a barrier in your own dream, okay? Right now we're going to go into some hot Omar Santana Did you know that he did some tracks with Sweet Sensation? Yes, the lovely girls of Sweet Sensation And here you go with more of Omar Santana
Collectors out there may know who that young lady was that we just had on. Um, that was Maria Ventura, and of course, that was the Omar Holds the Key Club Mix. Yes, we had Omar Santana first, just like we had La India first, Mark Anthony first, 
Lil Louis Vega first. They all had their roots in freestyle. They have sprouted out and done their different things except for, you know, hopefully we'll reel them back in here to the freestyle where their roots began. And, you know, we celebrate what they do now, but we're celebrating what they've done and hopefully what they might entertain in the future. Um, some of you out there, like me, are collectors of this great freestyle stuff. There's so much, uh, DVDs and CDs and vinyl and you name it, there's something out there. Now, a lot of you know that there's a lot of hard to find stuff. Now, I'm going to put it out there because, I, hey, I'm a collector too. There's something that I've been looking for for a long time. If any of you out there happen to have a copy of hit me up and let me know because I'm dying to get my hands on it. Um, some years ago, a, a great group of guys put together a series of DVDs of a freestyle. They were interviewing a lot of the artists and producers that made the music happen, and they called this, the series is called "The Kings and Queens of Freestyle." There was a, a number of volumes. There was volume one, two, and three. There was a special one with just Stevie B and whatnot. And I got the one and the two, and I do have the Stevie B, but I missed that darn three. And it's like the hardest one to find now. Now in this one. He really fo they really focus on Chris Barbosa, Andy Panda, Carlos Barrios, and the likes of that. Some people in the production end, like we're doing this evening uh, with Omar Santana. So if you could have this volume three and you're looking to, to sell it, uh, talk to Swins, talk to Swins. And, you know, with that whole thing of collectors and people trading and selling and everything like that, you know, look to the Freestyle Universe group on Facebook where um, we have a segment we could dedicate to that if you want to put that you're selling something or you want to put that you're looking for something you just hit me up and i'll put that on the group's page i'm very very tight on how i uh, present the group and and i post it, this stuff because i don't want spam and everything else like that i hope you understand but i do put stuff out there when i get the material so don't uh feel hesitant to contact me and, and say that you have material that you want on that page i just don't want a lot of re repetitive stuff and whatnot so with that being said omar santana also worked with another girl group because you know i mentioned that he worked with sweet sensation but before that there are three hot young ladies you may know some of them uh some of the more popular ones like arlene or la di da they are the girls of Leather and Lace. Yes, Omar worked with Leather and Lace, and here's a little Omar Leather and Lace magic. Let your body go!
Jam. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. You heard that last track. That was another sweet sensation one that Omar did. Completely, utterly amazing. You know, a lot of us, you know, who really got into the dub mixes of these things with the clubs and stuff, but that's what the DJs really got creative. You know, when they put those dub mixes in and they they started sampling things and they, you know, some of them really went crazy you know like it wasn't just playing a record after a record it was really mixing and doing and doing all this magic and i think omar inspired a lot of that and that last track of course with the sweet sensation really showcased that um this is somebody who has inspired so many people and his star shines bright just like some others that you know i'm going to mention a few others you know because there's you know, Chet Nunez, excuse me, who has passed and stuff, you know, got, you know, rest in peace, uh, Chet, Chep, excuse me, <laughs> Latin Rascals, there's Carlos Barrios, this is, gosh, you just name it, there, there's just a number of, of guys, you know, in the line, in the order of Omar that I would also like to recognize, but, you know, we always do that here at the Freestyle Universe, we try to incorporate, you know, all the elements of freestyle in this. Uh, wonderful thing that we're doing here and right now I just hope that in doing this you know and, and, and trying to get these people some of them maybe motivated and, and back into the music that we could just break that shell that we're all we're we're almost there just crack that that shell open and, and let's take over the music business all over again that you know I may aim high and stuff like that you know and to some of you guys who know me around my way it's like <laughs> oh, but no, I'm not doing that no more. I I have repented, of course. Yes, come here, please. Anyway, uh, back to the music. Um, here is another thing that you may know that Omar has worked with the wonderful Carlos Barrios. Here is a sample of the magic that happens when two greats come together. Here's the Kings of Freestyle back in time.
Now, if that wasn't amazing, I don't know what is. I have been building you up to this moment, you know. It's like a climax. Oh, oh wait, wait. <laughs> I'm not being bad. I'm not being bad. But I've been building you up because I've been talking about how great this guy is. And here we have him, the one and only Omar Santana is one line with me right now. How you doing, Omar? Good, man. How you guys doing out there? Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a no, virgin all nervous. over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> now, I'm trying to define you because I know you've got to start as a DJ. You're an editor, a producer, you know, a mix. You know, the, for the layperson, you know, let's just break it all down to them and, and let's get how you start off because it's DJ first and is it editor next or what? What? how does it break down? Um, yeah, I started out as a, as a DJ when I was like 15, 16, and then, um, uh, I used to DJ for like a breakdancing crew, and, you know, when breakdancing was popular at the time, and I met, uh, this individual named Albie Nieves, who, uh, liked my mixing style, because it was, it was super, super tight, and, uh, he actually showed me how to, uh, cut tape, and, um, from there, it's, forget it, I just, you know, I started making, I worked at a store called The Wiz, and I started making mixtapes, um, cassettes um, for The Wiz, instead of playing the albums every, because we would have to change the albums every time, and um, so I would just make a, a full-on mixtape, and then play it, and then a couple of uh, record company, uh, you know, execs, and, you know, A&R people came in, and asked who made the tape, and I said they did, and uh, they were like, yo, you want to do some editing. <laughs> that, that was it. That's how everything started. So, yeah. Wow, so is this something that runs in your family? Because I understand your brother is, is also in the in the biz. Well, my, my parents were musicians, actually. Um, my mom was a singer, and my dad uh, is a guitar player. And um, back in the day, I mean, I remember being as a kid going with them to, to recording studios and uh, you know and, and on certain tours and stuff like that um, and you know I'm a drummer actually I took up took up drums and saxophone and, yeah, and violin but drums were, were the main things for me but uh, yeah um, my parents were musicians and then um, what happened was is because um, Albie who taught me how to edit um, he went to CMA Center for the Media, Center for the Media Arts and I did started doing so well at age 17, 18, um, that they put my brother in school, actually, uh, at in CMA, and uh, he's pretty well at it too. But he knows how to do all the same stuff. He just doesn't like to do it <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, you know, we 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 would sit there, and the, the way I would come up with some of the uh, editing kind, because he's uh, he's actually been in DMC, uh, not the final, but. Between, between, yeah, before the finalists, you know, he made it pretty far in DMC. He's a really good scratcher, and um, so what he would do is he would do scratch patterns, and I would try to imitate the scratch patterns with the edits. That's how I came up with certain patterns and ideas. Is listening to how he scratched, believe it or not. So, yeah. <laughs> so when, that's how we did that. When it comes to the freestyle, how did you get involved with the freestyle and? Um, Particularly, like when, when you, how did you come together with Aldo and Amato and um, like the Sapphire Don't Break My Heart? Okay, um, it's funny because when I worked at the Wiz, I was working there when I was sixteen, and um, I first heard, you know, Al Nafish, and I, I called up Aldo, and I was, you know, I was a big fan of Aldo anyway when he was on KTU, but I was like, you know, like a stalker <laughs> hey man i love your mix oh my god this is, this is sick and love the new record and all that stuff and you know we ordered it to the store and I, I would let him know how it was selling. so we kind of stayed in touch that way um and then what happened was is i met this other individual named carlos uh rogers and we were in the same record pool actually and um he said he has a studio, so I said, all right. So I just kind of messed around with drum machines and everything, and we needed a keyboard player. And we uh, met this guy named Peter Schwartz at uh, at Sam Ash, and um, we wrote uh, Don't Break My Heart when I was 17. <laughs> and, 
we shot the track because my first record I did was a track called You Can Do It by Nova on Emergency Records. Mm -hmm. And I brought it to Emergency first, uh, the track. And we, they was actually going to go to Shannon. Originally, Don't Break My Heart was going to Shannon. And Chris Barbosa and Mark Liggett, who I respect very, very much, um, you know, they were like, cool, but we want to, we want to reproduce the track. And I'm like, nah, nah, it's great the way, great. You know, it was perfect the way it is. It was all tracked out and everything. Mm-hmm. We just need the right vocalist. And so I had to think about it. And then I remembered, hey, Aldo, I always call, I always speak to him. And so I gave him the track. He loved it. And, um, he found the bulk, he found, um, uh, Wilma Sapphire through Albert Cabrera. Um, and um, that's it. The rest is history from there on in. So <laughs> that, that that was it. You, yeah, that, yeah, I would say it's history. <laughs> that, that was amazing. Yeah. yeah, that is an amazing track. And now you also work with the Sweet Sensation ladies and stuff. How did that come about? Um, yeah, that came about uh, because Charlie Diaz uh, and Chef Nunez were partners. They were a group called the Diamond. Diamond Two, I think they were called, and I think they was they was, they split up. And Charlie D, Charlie Diaz needed a new partner, and brought me in to work on um, Hooked on You was the very first track. And I said, okay, I'll work on it, you know. And I just started experimenting with edits and <laughs> doing some crazy things on that track. And, you know, Ted Curry, the producer, and Charlie were like. You know, they, you know, that's when I first came up with like the machine gun edits and stuff like that. They were like, oh my God, you know, and Ted loved it. Ted wanted more of that stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll do more, you know, and um, the rest, uh, yeah, the rest is history after that because, th- I mean, Ted kept me on almost all the, all the records that uh, that he did, actually. I did what? Because I did the Boogie Boys. Anything he produced, pretty much I edited almost everything. Like the Boogie Boys and, um, what else? Uh, a couple of other bands. I just can't remember them off the top. I, I know I did a I did a Sly Fox one also. Coma I did a I did a re-edit on it for the album, but I didn't uh, uh, I didn't get credit for that. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> Could be a mis- mistake. Oh, yeah, but you, things huh? happen. It happens. <laughs> huh? They gypped you. Huh? They gypped you. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> in the blue moon, you know. <laughs> it's all good. Now, you were also known as part of the hit squad with Carlos Barrios. Now, tell me all about that. Um, how did I meet Carlos? I, met him, I know I met him through a friend. And, um, yeah, I heard his editing style. It was pretty, it was cool. I like what he did. And it's like, it, you know, it's like when I hear certain people, I just know I can, I can, um, you know, teach them and mold them into, into something. I even do that with producers and, and music and stuff like that. Um, but I heard his, I heard his style and I liked it. I was like, okay, this kid, this kid I needed a partner at the time because I was just getting so, so busy. You know, I couldn't juggle the two. <laughs> you know, like the, the rascals can juggle because, you know, they got Tony and Albert so they, they can bounce back and forth. I didn't have anybody I could bounce back and forth with. So when I met Carlos, I was like, oh, okay. And, um, so we just, you know, started experimenting uh, a lot with, with the edits and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, from from there on in, um, you know, I just kind of the, the the thing. <laughs> love Carlos, but uh-huh. he's not too, he's not really fast. <laughs> when I needed him to be fast, but he's good. He's really really good. So because you know when you're getting when you Warner Brothers at the time when we were cutting tape, you know Warner Brothers or Sony, and they say, "Yo, we give you 12 hour block. You got to get an A side, a B side, and a radio edit done." You know, with multis, it's got to be done. It's, you know, you can't, you can't, um, you can't mess around. And so, you know, I'm pretty quick. Quick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to be quick. You got to be, you got to be quick. But it's still got to sound really good. You know, so you don't just you don't want to kind of just throw it together. So, you know. Yep. <laughs> and putting together the show and, 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 tr- and trying to, you know, really give a, a good picture of all that you have done in the freestyle genre. You know, I it, you, there's so much that you've done in total that it was hard to narrow it down to what you've done in freestyle. Now, could you give us some of 
a little bit of a discography of what you've done with the freestyle music. Um, well, yeah, I've worked on, I did the, the Don't Break My Heart. Uh, I worked on some trilogy stuff, Red Hot. I did the Sweet Sensation. Um, oh my God, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff I worked on with freestyle that I can't, um, oh my God, and more I worked on. And yeah, I just, I can't remember everything that I've worked on with freestyle because there's a lot. I mean, I've, then, I, then from there, I started working on more pop stuff, but, um, you know, like Rolling Stones and uh, Duran Duran and stuff like that that I had to do. But, um, yeah, I'm trying to remember a lot of the <laughs> freestyle that I did. Did you, but, have uh, any, did you have any favorites? Any favorites that I worked on? Um, whew, um, I don't know. I mean, working on... You know, working on this, the Don't Break My Heart was one of my favorites, I would say, because, you know, we, we would just experiment. I like to experiment with stuff, you know, um, and we were experimenting with that track a lot, you know, so that's, that's, that would be definitely one of my favorites is, is that track. Even with editing, you know, I would, I would just constantly experiment with different types of editing and effects and stuff like that. The thing is, but once I get you know bored and tired of it, then I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so no. that's what happened. I just got just burnt from from freestyle, I'm burnt from editing. And well, I'm I just like oh, I don't want it. What's I, that? I've heard the bits and pieces that you've done, like the bits and pieces '84 and everything like that. How did that come up? That's just an amazing uh, body of work that you've done with the bits and pieces. Like, tell me more about that. Um. Yeah, that's kind of like a, you know what it is? It's like a hobby thing. You, you know, you just kind of, you work on it, you take a break, you come back, you work on it again. And, or you just get ideas, like three in the morning, you go back, you jump on it again. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, it's one of those things that, um, I mean, I even have a freestyle one here that I've never released that, um, which is like a, a full on mega mix, like 45 minutes that I just keep. You know, I used to just keep tweaking it and adding more stuff and tweaking it and adding more stuff. So, you know, in, be, in, be, in between of projects that I was working on, I would just, I would jump on that for fun. So it's more of like, oh, I don't have a deadline. I'm just going to have fun with this. You know, you don't have to worry about. You well, know. you're the, you're talking to the person who loves to hear about people jumping on, on something for fun. No, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, there you go. We gotta twist your arm and have you release this now that you have just uh, told us all about that. You have to release it. What? What? And that's gonna lead into my next question. What can we do uh, in the freestyle world to get you maybe to? You know, freestyle's doing a lot of coming back. There's a lot of people who used to be in the genre that have a uh, new passion for it, are doing new influences in it and stuff. You know, I think that it. Could, a master needs to come back and I mean like you could just really blow them away I mean, you know yeah, I mean it's, I'm not sure it's not been on your radar but you know um, maybe you consider it maybe in sometime in the near future or um, it, there's a possibility that you know if the right um, vocalist comes my way or the right you know the right vocalist with the right song comes my way I, I would you know considering producing I mean I produce a lot of you know, I just put out a couple of new breaks tracks, but which has, you know, obviously that in, that freestyle influence with the, with the with the drums rolling a certain way and, and stuff like that. And you know, I even do some, you know, a couple of digital edits here and there for fun. But um, you know, there's there's always a possibility that uh, I can I can jump on a a freestyle track if if the right vocalist and the right song comes my way. It's just, you know, <clears throat> who, who would who would put it out? You know, that's the thing. I don't know uh, what labels would be interested in freestyle anymore. So, I don't know. Uh, Maybe Aldo. <laughs> well, I, I'm talking to Aldo a lot lately. You know, I really, me and him are in contact all the time. So, you know, you never know. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm, never I'm know. liking this. This, this. You know, I'm going to try to slowly influence you to, to maybe consider <laughs> That's true. That's true. You never know, man. You never know. Now the right, the right, right track can come along. So you yeah. never know. 
I, and I, I feel it. I feel, you know, I'm channeling something. I feel it coming along soon. <laughs> good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm down. Totally down. Excellent. <laughs> so I know, you know, coming from, you know, being in the, the business this long now, what is the difference com- equipment wise? Because I, I've really done my research and I've talked to the people who know this stuff. Equipment wise, you have to have gone from, you know, I don't know what they were using back then to now, like, what were you using back then as opposed to what are you using now equipment wise and, and doing the editing um oh for, for editing wise yeah and, and, you know the whole the, the mixing the editing all that you know the, what you do the yeah. magic the magic is done i know it can't be the same stuff that you was using back then now what what was it that you was using back then as opposed to what you're using now um well back then we were using you know reel to reels and cut it up um you know, now you can, you can you just do it on a computer. It's so simple to do it on a computer now. It's a piece of cake, you know, versus <laughs> cutting up the cutting up the tape and measuring everything with you know the sixteenths, quarters, the eighths, and thirty two, sixty fours, um, and still making it sound clean with a computer. It's it's so easy, super super easy with a computer. Um, but you know, and as far as equipment wise, I mean, when we did, uh, you know, don't break my heart. Let's just say, you know, we used an SP twelve hundred, a nine hundred nine, uh, Yamaha DX seven, um, a couple other since at the time. I think a Juno one hundred six. I'm trying to remember. Um, you know, um, but the funny thing is, is that a lot of people are going back to some of the old analog right now because you're getting a you get you get more of that warm sound. You still, you, I mean, they're sequencing with a computer, but um, they're going back to a lot of the older analog sounds to get that feel. Even the old MPC, you know, four thousands, three thousands, and stuff like that. Because it doesn't it doesn't feel the same. You know, um, a lot of those tracks were programmed on, um, you know, either a lid nine thousand SP twelve hundred or or the MPCs. You know. So that's why it had that that rolling feel to the track that computers, uh, I mean, in my opinion, don't have that that feel. It's too stiff. So, well, little birdie told me that you know how to play piano. Do you incorporate that into you, you what you do? Well, uh, I, I don't know how to play that good. I play by ear, so I know, I know how to play by ear, but I'm not, you know, I'm not great at the piano. But yes, I, I do. Uh, play and I play um, by ear, so I know. I don't know why. I just know what I'm looking for. I know what, how to play it and stuff. I know my chords and which I, you know, I was taught by my dad, you know, and and I'm a drummer. So um, every time I program, I program as a drummer. So everything's very rhythmic in, in the synths or or uh, anything that I do in the track. It's, it's very rhythmic, even with the edits. <laughs> Very, very bad. So, well, I, you know, oh, yeah. between you and I, I, I know that you know that my wonderful producer is uh, DJ Smoke, and, and you've worked with him. You've been on his show, and now he told me that when you were on his show, all you needed to know was what equipment you were working with or whatever like that, and you just made the magic happen. And I mean that you could work with anything. You just know all your equipment, and uh, with the, with the the DJ and, and the mixing like that. So, are you like the master with this stuff? I mean, you must have worked with a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, the thing about me, is I, I like to, ex- I, I'll just sit there and experiment. If I get a, a mixer, I'll just sit there for you know, for weeks and figuring out what everything does on the mixer. You know, um, what effect? How can I mess with the effect? And, and it, it's, it's exactly with editing. You know, when I first heard, you know, Albert. Uh, edit and stuff. I, I you know I love the way that they they were cutting up the tape, and I was just like, but what if I did this? And what if I did put a space here? And what if I chopped this? And what if I made it thirty two notes instead of? You know, I just love to experiment with with stuff with ideas. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you know, with, with when it came to his mixer, I, I was familiar with that mixer, but I I just like to experiment with with. Anything with uh, equipment, with mixers, with with synths, you know. How can I get this crazy sound out of this thing? <laughs> you know. 
So yeah, that's 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 what I do. Love doing that. And, and from what I understand, you also had a radio show at, at one point where um, you did edited uh, mixes on that show, and you uh, you along with uh, who was it? Tommy? Was it um, that you had a show for a while? Um, I did a show. A- I did a college, yeah, I did a college show, uh, I can't remember the show, but yeah, I did a college show, uh, it was a radio show, it was on FM, but yeah, and then I actually did some stuff on the side for BLS, which I didn't get credit, but, uh, I did some, some, um, some tracks for BLS, like Como Chitia, uh, no, no, not Como Chitia, um, Conga, I think, by Miami Sound Machine, and a couple other ones that, they had me edit, do some, like, cool multi-edits and stuff like that, and, but I never, never got credit for it. And I was like, like okay, I'm not going to do this because I wasn't getting, you know, I wasn't getting paid. I was already getting paid, you know, making money doing track, you know, pro- uh, editing and, and producing. But I figured, well, you know, it'll give me more exposure. But I didn't get credit on the radio, so I was like, ah, I'm not going to do this for for the BLS. But uh, yeah, I did some stuff on some other shows, some college shows and stuff like that. So. Well, we know that you're still amazing and that you're doing so much other stuff. Tell us what, you know, I know I'm straight away from our freestyle fan base right now, but we're going to see what Omar is doing right now. Omar, tell us what you are doing now. And I know you're in the, uh, the techno and uh, I mean, I, I, yep. I, uh, the next day, the ne- the wordage and stuff like that for the things because, you know, I'm a freestyle person. But tell me about yeah. what you're, you're into right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I own a, a label called Tricked Out Recording, and that was started in 95, I think, I can't remember, yeah, about 95, but it was, it was breaks, and, but I'm doing more of that now, which is, um, doing some breaks on the label, but it's, I, it's dark breaks, um, and then, um, doing something called Trap Step, which com- combines dubstep with trap. And, um, you know, just having fun with that, experimenting. Kids, you know, kids are loving it. I've been playing, DJing and playing it out, and it sounds, you know, it's pretty heavy. So, you know, you gotta, when you're coming up with some new stuff, you just, you gotta come out swinging. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's what I have, uh, out right now, actually. And, and you can check it out on my, on my SoundCloud. Excellent. And how would the people follow you? Like, you have website, besides SoundCloud, you have website, a Facebook, all that, so the fans yeah. that love you so much could follow all that you do. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Omar Santana, DJ, uh, DJ Omar Santana on my SoundCloud, stuff like that. So you can, yeah, peep out all my stuff and check out all the. This is this one new track that I did with a friend of mine um, called um, "Taste the Way You Move," and it, it's a it's a breaks track. Um, it's it's hard, but. Um, you know, it's the same thing. It's got that freestyle influence in it, you know. So it's got vocals, too, in that track. So it's pretty, uh, pretty good track, actually. I think uh, I think people will like it. So. Well, well I, have a, I have a little idea for you, Omar. Just let me throw this out at you because, you know, my thing is the freestyle and pushing you guys back into the freestyle. Just a little bit. Just nudge you back a little bit to freestyle. You know, I say that Omar comes out with a wonderful project. For freestyle, you know, uh, we get you some wonderful vocalists, and, and you have a nice compilation or whatever, just as a throwback for us who love you so much for that. You know, maybe it's something that you might just marinate on one, and you know, and you can say, you know, that crazy guy from New York and, uh, and Queens had just because got it stuck in my head, so I just got to get it out there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. Sure. Well, see, I'm from Queens too, so that works out perfect. <laughs> I was born and raised in Queens. Oh, well, see, so you're perfect then. You know, you can't go wrong with Queens, huh? <laughs> That's right. The only thing is I'm not a Mets fan. I'm a Yankees fan. I know. I know. I get it from everybody. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, know? it's all New York. It's all New York. You know, Mets, Yankees, yeah. we, all, we all one big family here. Huh? Heck yeah. That's totally, great. man. Totally. Well, I agree. Omar, I, I want you to know that we in freestyle, you know, we are all giving you your your, your roses, if you will, right now. This is an honor for me. 
I know that this is something that the fans have been waiting to hear from you about your freestyle experience and stuff. We support you in whatever you do. I want you to know that one thing about us freestyle people, we support you. It, no matter what you're going to go on to do, we still love you. So, and we appreciate what you've done for us. We do hope that you come visit us again and maybe throw some freestyle. But I want you to know that. Definitely. <laughs> I want you to know that you have my full support. And I, you know, I'm representing a lot of people out there in the freestyle world. Um, and I, I really thank you for, for honoring me by being on my show. And um, uh, I hope you've done you all mine, my man. I hope I've done you justice. <laughs> definitely. Yes, yes. I, I, and, and, and next time I'm in New York, definitely going to come out and hang out with you guys, man. Definitely. Oh, excellent. Yo, oh, that was, an incredible, that was an incredible interview, Omar. Thank you so much, man. We learned, oh man, it's all good, man. We learned so much. Good. We learned so much about the behind the scenes, like with Shannon, and you know, there's very few people that have that industry inside information like you. And uh, oh yeah, yeah. And and you know, the freestyle community appreciates that. Um, we're hoping maybe we can get some trap step running version coming out. You know, information system. <laughs> you know, some like that would be tight. Some some tight. That, yeah. some something that might you know entice the freestyle community to open their minds a little bit and get a little into the hardcore. Um, <laughs> or you could or you could do an old school freestyle. Come on, you know, or, or new school freestyle. Whatever, uh, you know, a, a new a new Omar freestyle type of thing going on because. You know, I don't know if you know, but Todd, Todd Terry's been back at, um, in the freestyle. Alberto. Cabrera. Yeah, uh, Alberto's back mm. in the freestyle. They're, they're coming back, and they're, they're doing different things, but it's exciting, and it's hot, and it's even, new. And... Even Todd Terry, right? He's... Yeah, yeah, I mentioned Todd, yeah. He's wow. Crazy yeah, I got to hear it. I definitely am going to look up some of his latest stuff and um, see if yeah, I can throw yeah, down. Aldo so. has all of it. Aldo has, because he's doing it on cutting. Oh okay, okay. Oh my God! I, 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 I talked to him actually about about me interviewing you and stuff like that. Are you in contact with him in, in any way? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I speak to Aldo. I mean, last time I spoke to him was I think the beginning of this year. Actually, we just kind of reminisced about some stuff. So you know, we we still kind of stay in touch, him and I. So, I know he would jump on it if he if, if he got you back. <laughs> <laughs> actually, he wanted to pick up some of my dubstep stuff that actually is what he wanted oh yeah <laughs> yeah but i kept it for my label oh, i still know. i but, still yeah he wanted i still rock anunnaki man i love that track <laughs> oh yeah that's a dope track thanks man that's no a cool man, track, man definitely you, you're up in denver right now yeah yeah i'm in yeah i live over here now man how's yeah. your how's your daughter she's so precious Yes, she might, she's doing good, my girl, man. I still have the video. Good, man. I still have the video when you brought her to the house and she was dancing hardcore to your set. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, she's eight. She's eight years old now, man. Wow. I'm like, oh no. She was like what, four, yeah, four or five when she came? Oh my god. Yeah, she was like five. Time, yeah. Time she fucking hanging flies, out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh my god. She's daddy's little girl, man. She's gorgeous. Totally, man. Totally. Preciosa, preciosa. Actually. I, I, I got a funny story for you guys, uh, right. and uh, it's an Aldo story. You'll love this story, actually. When I did the deal for Don't Break My Heart, I wanted a Cutting Records jacket, and I said, as soon as you make jackets, I get one for free. <laughs> and it took a while, to, I don't know, maybe it took two and a half years before they actually really did the jackets, you know, and I just did it because I... I was always I love you know I love cutting records since since the very first uh, release they put out, and I remember Aldo called me into his office, so I had to go uh, uptown to uh, was it Dykeman Street or something like that. I'm like, yeah, what's up? He goes, here you go. And he's like, what's this? He goes, your jacket. I was like, no way. And uh, he's like, yeah, you're the only one that gets for free. And I was like, what? He goes. You put it in your contract. I'm like, oh, <laughs> nice. You know, the, the nice leather jackets that they did, the uh, uh, the Letterman jackets, I guess they're called, or something like that. Oh, like the eight ball jacket. Is, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it had the leather on the arms. Yeah, exactly. It had the leather on the arms and then the wool in the middle. So oh, like yeah, yeah. Blue yeah. on the arms. And the, yeah. Oh, they and are the it's a tight, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
fat man. So they cut a record on the back, and then it had your name. You know, had the name uh, on a left or right breast pocket with, uh, with your name on it and stuff like that. There's my story. So well, I might <laughs> I might to hit up Auto to get my my jacket down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with yeah. I don't, I don't know if they, I don't think they make any of those anymore, man. But um, yeah, that was a nice, beautiful jacket he did, actually. Yeah, so it was a surprise. We had to get a picture. We had to get a picture with you in that jacket, huh? Man, I, uh, oh man, I wish I still had my jacket. Man. I wouldn't fit in there now. Uh-huh. That's a dope. It was a nice, beautiful jacket, actually. Oh, so, this is dope. Aldo, Aldo stuck to his deal. Uh-huh. <laughs> a man of his word, huh? Yeah, oh, definitely. Uh, all those these good people, man. Him and his brother, actually. Amato, well, good people, man. So. That's what's up. And, and uh, Louis. Yeah, Louis, also. Like, uh, Louis, I'm sorry, Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all, all good guys, man. Those varsity jackets were awesome, man. Are they varsity? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they, they had They call varsity jackets. They had the cutting. They had the cutting. The record on the back, right? Or something yeah, like yeah. that. And it was like in, in. Did they have rhinestone or something? Some bling to it, I think. No, it. Well, it was all embroidered, but the silver because it had like the silver, like the like a blade. Yeah, it must and it was have like been a that. shiny. Yeah, 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 it was, that yeah, was, it was shiny. It. That was yeah, it. That was a fat. Yeah, that was a fat jacket. Though. Damn man, you could really, really eat, nice You could eat me that shit for money right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> If I had it, yeah, man. If I had it, I could have, could have sold it right now, man, for like a couple hundred bucks, man. Well, the jackets originally go for like a hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty when they first did those. So they got yeah, it a lot more than that now. Well, for, yeah, I'll fix it. for the for the person who appreciates the historic significance of it, of course. Freestyle collectors are crazy. They spend the money on these things. Trust me, they they have a record going for more than five hundred dollars right now. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. yeah. It's, wow. it's coming full circle like we said before. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I had quite a few. I had, um, let's see, cutting, I had a Tommy Boy jacket, I had a Sony jacket, um, you had the Tommy, cuts. You had the Tommy with the break, I had the Tommy with the break dancer in the back? Yeah, yeah, with the break dancer in the back, yeah. I, I had that Tommy. I had a prime cut. Yeah, remember the Prime Cuts jacket? There was a an editing studio called Prime Cuts. That was a really nice jacket. Was that the was actually. that the black jacket that with the red? Yeah, it was black in the middle, and then it had like red and yellow sleeves, and then it said Prime Cuts in the back, like yep. graffiti. Yep, I remember that. Really one too. dope. I remember that yeah, one too. That had, was dope. <laughs> yeah, I had that one too. <laughs> I wore, I wore, Which I, still had all I didn't have that one. I had the Tommy when I went out DJing and stuff, but I, I, I didn't have any other ones because um, uh, we did some stuff, you know, under Tommy back in the day with the Bambada. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. that's how I got my jacket. But again, I don't have it now, and if I did, I probably won't fit into it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had it, man. Too, uh, man. You guys don't have stuff like me. I'm a cra- I keep everything. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes yep. females they you know have a way of taking shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what happened to mine, actually. That's exactly. exactly what happened to mine. <laughs> well, that's a cute jacket. Can I wear it? You know, they they're wearing it, and then you never see it the next day. That was the end of it. Ever, you know, ever, oh, ever. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had more, I just can't remember what other jacket I had. Well, I had VIP, well, the record pool VIP, they gave me a jacket too. Um, I can't remember, I'm trying to remember what other jackets I had. I had, I had the, quite a few. The, the Strictly Rhythm jacket. Do you remember? Oh, no way, you had that one? Yeah, I saw that one. the one that's, that it's one. like purple, it wasn't purple, it was like mauve and, and gold. Yeah, yeah. And I had, the DMC, I had the DMC jacket, I had three DMC jackets. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I, I got oh, two of okay. them from I got two of them from battling, so. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, okay. And I still have. I had the record bag. Oh, the yeah. Yeah, I got. I had the. They gave me the record bag actually. Oh. So because I did some um, uh, I I did some remixes for DMC. I know uh when you know not the editing. I did editing for them, but not you know not scratching or anything, right. not DJing. Um, for those guys. But so. for, for Nigel, for um, Ron. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Yeah, Nigel, yeah, but, Ron, yeah, and some yeah. other characters. Yeah, when they were over there on Broadway, 
Half of them are half of them are passed away now. Really? Yeah, from what I understand, it's a whole new 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 tribe running DMC. Oh wow, man. Yep. But they're not in New York anymore, they're just back in the UK. No, they're back in they're back in Bristol, I believe, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. In UK. Okay. Mm. Wow, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, yeah, I remember all, <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> those, those were the days to be alive, man, and to be a DJ and, and doing raves and, 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 you know, traveling. Yeah, and, and, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm still doing raves, still traveling again, actually, believe it or not. Still doing some of that. You're not, but you're not with but, H2O, uh, or is H2O yours? Yeah, no, no, H2O is mine. I'm okay. still, still pushing. Well, what happened was, is once I, every, everything started going to digital formats, I had to, because other people put it up without my knowledge, and I had to Jump the you know, get everything taken down. Yeah, so now everything's being put back up by you know, myself. My wife, we're getting the label back up. That's like all the tricked out stuff is getting back up. But, but all your other relations with Rob G, everybody else is okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, um, I saw I spoke to Rob. I think it was like in February. We kind of go back and forth. Lenny, I just played with in Italy, uh, beginning of March. We just played a show together. Yeah, I heard he did a um, show with Rob too recently. Yeah, 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 totally. In Italy, was it? Um, well, no, 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 Rob, uh, no, Rob wasn't with us at the same show I was at. Oh, it was okay. Just, uh, Lenny and I. Oh, it might yeah, have Rob been. Yeah, Rob wasn't there for that. It might have been one of those Amsterdam joints or something like that. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he knows, he's going, he knows going back to Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right I need to go back to Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> then I put, I was, I was in Florida for the conference. I played a break show, a break show there. Nice. Um, last last month but so, isn't it isn't yeah, it we, isn't it weird how it's weakening every year like this winter music conference like i heard it was a bust this year yeah compared, compared to the other yeah. years you know? yeah everything is just kind of i don't know well you know what it was is the conference and ultra split up and it used to be all one, right. you know, and right. now the conference does its own thing, and Holster does its own thing. Well, so. you, you could thank Molly for that. Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> totally. That's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what it is, man. You know, but, um, yeah, man, no. Omar, thank you so yeah. much. I, I don't want to take so much of your time. We could talk for hours, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just opening horizons, because, you know, I guess DJs and stuff want to hear about the, how the evolution of what's going on especially with music and especially yeah. the, the the parabolic turn that EDM has turned took within this last three or four months you know and now a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of EDM is persona non grata at parties and I'm hearing that Vegas is getting rid of the digital platform Vegas is going to start opening up uh, vinyl platforms for original DJs to come back and we can eliminate the Paris Hiltons and the the wannabe push button, you know. Yeah, yeah, I got, uh, yeah, Master I totally <clears throat> have a major problem with that, definitely, because I don't, I, I don't like that. That's fake, you it, know. It I mean, is. I don't mind CDJs and, and, and you know, or using Serato, or, but don't just go there and hit play on your controller and then Master pretending Sink. you're mixing. Yeah. And then, and yeah, just that's ridiculous. Throw a cake at the crowd. Yeah. I'm not saying no names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. You know? And yeah. and that's not that's not what we did. That's not how we did it. I mean, people, we were not seen. Like now, DJs get a pedestal. But back in the day when we were doing yeah. our thing, we were hidden. You couldn't really see us. You know. Yeah. And yeah. people just yeah. knew that we were the the sound master of that event. Eventually, people wanted to know who the DJ was. Now, yes, we, exactly. We started getting into doing the tricking and, and, and battling and scratching, and now that was an opportunity to spotlight the DJ. Yep, and, and, that's right. But then MTV took over and they started making pretty faces, and I know I wasn't one of the prettiest DJs out there, so <laughs> I, I have a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know my brother Eric actually, my brother actually back 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 in the day he got asked to um, to uh, spin on MTV, uh, one of those things, and um, 
he, tur- he turned it down because it was either that or he had to show for a job interview and he got the job but you know I, to this day I was always like are you crazy you could have been spinning on MTV you know and I was uh, but but then you know, again but, but then again we didn't have computers and everything would have been live and the the stress on the DJ to do something perfect live on camera I yeah could, I could understand that too you know because needles aren't perfect they skip yeah, yeah <laughs> you know totally. uh, we get so totally. much into it sometimes our hip hits the table uh, a, 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 skip, yeah. a needle will skip. The, the art of the DJ is the next beat that comes. Whatever comes after that, if we make it sound good, there was no mistake. So you have to be yeah. on the fly, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. And that was yeah. a large venue. That's... MTV? What? Yeah. Yeah, that was for MTV, actually. I used to, I guess I used to carry, you know, two sets of needles, cartridges, everything. And you like know, eight, eight, wrong, and like eight the, fucking crates. Eight, no <laughs> eight fucking crates, too, man. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I remember yeah. carrying two or three crates in each hand, running to because I'm, I'm late I'm for too, a gig. <laughs> yeah, we're too old to carry crates now. Man. Tell me about it, yeah. man. I'm gonna be 46 this year, man. I I, I, yeah. I appreciate the laptop, but I, I still love my vinyl, man. I still have I polish them, I talk to them, I, I, I you know I have a relationship. <laughs> And it's, it's, yeah, it's that, amazing it's to know that a true. lot of a lot of my catalog involves you, and that's oh, that. thanks. Good. And I've always told <laughs> you since the first time I met you, it was always an honor, and I, I can't describe the jealousy of how you took my girl and whipped her and turned, <laughs> put her upside down, put her ass up, and just <laughs> tore, her, <laughs> tore her out. I told my I told my oh, boy, I, I told my boy Clever I'm like, oh my god, what did he just do? Did we tape that so I can go back and learn it? <laughs> and I thought I knew what I was doing. You remember? Oh man. I mean, we oh, and we didn't touch, you know, tonight on on your disability, which mm-hmm. yep. you know yep. it, it's yeah. it's amazing that you know he mentioned that you know this equipment. But you know this equipment yeah. by mind, by rote, not by seeing it. You know. Yeah, and then, uh, totally. Yeah. And then, yeah. Well, I didn't know if you wanted to say to talk about that or not, because you know something you told me, and I didn't want. To, I didn't know. If, you know. I, I don't know if you wanted to talk about that or not either. So. No, I mean. Oh no, it's fine. It it's fine. Out. I don't care about it. Yeah, but yeah. It, I did, yeah. now I could see. The day, I'm, it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Vincent Rupp, but I could see. The minute I told you it was a DJM 600, your mind just uh-huh. processed it. Your finger just went towards the mixer, and you just knew exactly we're doing it. And, I'm, and, and for me, the fascination is that's one mixer. I'm sure you can do it to hundreds of different yeah. equipment oh, yeah. out there. Oh yeah. You know that's oh, that, yeah. that that is that is it's now, impressive. It's impressive. Now we're talking Super yeah. Saiyan. We're talking Super Saiyan Dragon Ball Z level fucking seven, <laughs> <laughs> turning into a monkey I mean, and, and and fucking going off on a turntable. That's you, bro. Yeah, I mean, that's I was you. I was born with with the disease, but it wasn't until like the late thirties where it started, you know, getting worse. Because there's no way I would have been able to do the multi edits. Back in the day, but <laughs> on tape, yeah, no, on tape, and you have to measure, and you have to go back. Yeah, you, you gotta, yeah, yeah. You, have to be you gotta see everything. Or either that, yeah. or you slice the tip of your fingers off. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I was always told throughout my life that it was gonna progressively get worse. I was like, oh, you know, I better learn my learn the equipment really good, you know. But now, every, you know, it's easy now. I mean. It's easy because of the technology now. Everything's magnified, or even with an iPhone, I just touch it and it's you know, magnified, and it tells me exactly what's on the phone, where I don't have to strain my eyes. And I think what caused it even to get further was, you know, being doing a lot of the shows and cigarettes. And I don't smoke, but being at a lot of shows at the time when cigarettes were legal in clubs, I remember being on stage, man, my eyes were on fire. And I was like, oh my god, I had to close my eyes while I was DJing and I was like, oh, sh- this can't be good. <laughs> this cannot be good. Yeah, on, a, and, on another note, for me, my hearing greatly diminished because of DJing all these years. And 
Um, I know I yeah. need, if I'm going to be doing a big club, I know I need to have my, my limiters on because if not, I'm going to go deaf. You know, and that's my yeah, bread, yeah. that's my bread and butter. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, back in those days, there was you no know, the DJ booths were loud as hell, and the DJs wanted it loud as oh hell. Oh my god! You know, then you had yeah, smokers. They're still loud as hell. Yeah, yeah. they're still loud, man. <laughs> but but we need it like that, and if we don't t take care of ourselves, and unfortunately, there is no. DJ union or DJ healthcare mm -hmm. that we could be yeah. like, okay, we're going to be in AARP now and I need a little help. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, no, that's funny because when, when Lenny and I played in Italy, same thing, he brought earplugs and he, he gave me some. He's like, here, you know, right when we were, you know, About to go. getting ready to play and it, it was so loud on that stage, I was like, oh, shit. You're like, yeah, you want some earplugs? I'm like, yeah, I heard an even, you know. Yeah, but so, yeah, that was pretty loud. By the way, he's mentioning Lenny, Lenny Dean from from Limelight fame, from, oh my God, almost yeah. every fucking club that would have him. I think even going back to the goth days, the bank, I remember doing some party back there in the days when Lenny D was was just tearing it up. So, mad props going yeah. back to well, you. We all, yeah, we know each other since we, like, Frankie Bones, I mean, Frankie and I knew each other since we were 16, actually. Uh, it's funny, actually, the first time we were cruising on 86th Street, I think we were, like, um, we were like 18 years old, and we heard Don't Break My Heart for the first time on the radio. We were like, what the? <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, shit, it's not. We heard it on uh, KTU for the first time. We're like, what? You know, and we were like, eight. but we know each other since we were like 16, and Joey Beltram since we were like 17, same thing. So we all know each other as kids. Uh, so, you know, even the record pool that we belong to, uh, VIP, because Frankie Bones and I were members of it. You had, um, who else was in the pool? You had, uh, Mickey Garcia, you know, you had Elvin and Wolf uh, was in there, uh, Molly Mall, I think was in VIP too. A lot of big people came out of that record pool. Uh, Bismarck, well, wasn't Bismarck in there too? Bismarcky? Who? Bismarcky? I think uh, I'm not sure if Biz was part of that. Well, I don't remember see, ever seeing him Cause I, I meeting. Mean, I remember. I remember he mentioned something to me. We used to we used to shop up at Rock and Soul. Yeah. Okay. And, and he told. I remember him a couple of times out there when we were doing picks and stuff. And uh, he, you know, mentioned that he was in a couple of record pools and he was starting one up. I thought VIP was it, but I could be wrong. You know, some okay. guys, some guys were members just. Have, you know, so the, so the record pool can have bragging rights. Say, well, we have more, more, we have this, we have that, you know. So I wouldn't use, he probably was, but I've never seen him in, in the meetings. He, we have like a monthly meeting. Right, right, right. And, uh, what's coming out? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, oh, I don't remember him being. So maybe he might have just been a name, but I don't know. Yeah, most likely he was a name. Like that, but that's so. that's that's history. I mean, that's DJ. That's DJ one on one record pools, going sh record shopping. I remember, you know, waking up oh, early yeah. in the morning, lighting up a nice L, and going to uh, downtown records, going to Vinyl Mania, going to Rock and Soul, and, and and just hanging out the whole day, and just listening to music. Sometimes I'd get up in Vinyl Mania and I'd spin the new music out, and people were like, "I want that track. I want that track." <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know I, I I used to um, go to the you know, Vinyl Media a lot, and they you know they didn't get ready over there, and they would play you know my versions like the Super Sensation or whatever in the dubs, and I would just kind of chill out and watch the reaction yeah. of some of the people there just to see the reaction. But they wouldn't, you know, my friends wouldn't say that I'm there, but you know, I just wanted to see the reaction from some of the people. <laughs> you yeah, know? No, that, and that's, yeah. that's what you do. A lot of like people that make movies, they'll be, you know, yeah. anonymous in the in the theater to get the reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and I and I get yeah. that. I mean, that that's awesome. I mean, bro, you had lived such a life. I remember one of my first freestyle records was that crimson colored cutting record, "Don't Break My Heart" by Sapphire, and to see your name in it, I was like, wow, man. <laughs> I still got the, I still got the first record I ever bought. I still have it there. I mean, it was that and you know, Herbie Hancock. I got those two records. For oh me. wow! Yeah, Aldo, I remember Aldo saying to me 
He said he couldn't put the, the rest of his money into that record, and if the record doesn't do well, he might close the label. I remember him saying that. And I was like, nah, man, you can't do that. And he's like, yeah. So he, he put a lot of money into that record. And, um, yeah, it, it did well. So I'm very happy. You know, it, it all came together, everything, with that record. So good stuff. You turned out perfect. I you need um, I think it was excellent. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a legend. Yeah, yeah no, it's a fun thing. Yeah, that was a, it was a fun track to me. I, I mean, I was very, uh, you know, I was very happy when when I we get we get the finished results of the, the track and you know, it just, everything just came out. It, it couldn't come out any better than what than what happened with the track. It's like know? it's iconic. I mean, just the original, just the first sixteen bars of that track. It, it, it still to this day gives me goosebumps, and it, I'm sure across the whole freestyle community it does the same thing because you know exactly what's coming up, and it's, yeah. <laughs> it's that you know. And then for your legacy that you'd never diluted from your sound, you know, all the other edits that you do have that fluidity, have that swing that digital doesn't have. Right. Yeah. And oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. you know it's totally analog. I know you're working off of MPCs, and I know we didn't have mm -hmm. you know um, keyboards that we could program you know back those back in those days. But you you did your thing with melodies. Uh, I guess that comes from the background that you have with your, with your family. You know you know music. You know chords. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my, yeah, I mean, I grew up listening to. I mean, I still like, you know, Zeppelin and Sabbath. Oh, yeah. I grew up listening to a lot of, a lot of rock. So, you know, I incorporate a lot of that sound. You know, I try to incorporate a lot of that sound into um, whatever I produce. You know, it's, it's just kind of make the back, of, you know, the hair in the back of your head stand. That's how I like it. I gotta keep it interesting. And dude, most, I, mean, I think 130% of your music is like that, bro. I mean, uh -huh. even, <laughs> even to this day, even the new stuff, I mean, even the newer stuff that you're throwing out, I mean, uh, I'm, I was big into dubstep at the moment because, you know, there was a fever for it. And I still love it. I'm mm -hmm. still doing my mixes. But you came out and said, well, this is my this is my dubstep album. And <laughs> this is how I do it. Yeah. And you flip me out, yeah. man. I mean, you're you're in, you're in outer space. You're 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 conquering the universe with this sound, you know. And, Thanks, man. And, and, yeah, no, I like pushing the envelope. That's you do, it. You I do. love pushing it. You know. You do, man. There's no there's no such thing as an envelope for you, man. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing can contain that raw talent, man. And 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 like I said, we're so blessed to have you and to be able to showcase you and to honor what you've done oh. in, in our little way but from our corner of the universe you know and this is what we're doing oh, oh, good man uh, I appreciate it man thank you very much man you know thank, thank, you. thank you thank you well right now I'm gonna go into one of the tracks that everybody knows you for and loves you for a wonderful woman that we all know Sapphire came out with the track Don't Break My Heart but who made that? Omar Santana. And it's been my <laughs> honor. Thank you.
I know that you are at home rocking it out to that Omar Santana Diamond Dub version of Sweet Sensations Hooked on You that we just played. That was amazing. This man is so incredible. And I just hope that um, I've jacked just enough to give him a little few poke pokes instead of getting back there and freestyle. You know, let's cross our fingers, people. This is what I do. And I, I think that he got a little bug and I, you know, I'm going to, you know, channel it and I'm going to have, you know, somehow I'm going to use my witch powers and, and put it in his head to, Omar, do freestyle, do freestyle, give us a CD, give us some mixes. <laughs> and I, you know, hopefully it'll work, but um, it's been a pleasure to have him on and, and I'm just, it's such a high right now, now. I mentioned in the interview that Omar did uh, Bits and Pizzas 84. He did uh, Bits and Pizzas throughout the years, actually. But one of the ones that stands out to a lot of people is Bits and Pieces 84. Now, I think this is kind of pre-freestyle days, but it if you listen to it, it really encapsulates a lot of that freestyle sound. This is something that the DJs definitely know, and it's something I think that all of you are going to enjoy. Um... Let's take let, let's take a listen, and and this would usually I'm gonna uh, hold that one minute. Usually in the show, and I said this in the last show, we have a DJ of the week segment where we highlight a DJ, uh, any kind of DJ who wants to do a little freestyle mix. You know I, what I was hoping for, but you know Omar's press for time and everything like that was that Omar would give us a new freestyle mix. So, but we're gonna we're gonna wait and make that happen another time, but. And being that this is a show about Omar Santana, I thought this Bits and Pieces 84 Omar San Santana Master Mix would go perfect with the show. I hope that um, you all agree with me. And here we're going to go right now into Bits and Pieces 84 Omar Santana's Master Mix. You check it out right now.
if I never did anything right in my life, I hope I did right by Omar Santana because it has been a pleasure having him on the, on the Freestyle Universe radio show right here on EmberRadioLive.com where I hope that you're tuning in every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for all new episodes of what I think is a wonderful series that we've done here. We're on our season six. It is just a joy. I really feel supported and and taken care of by my wonderful producer i can never say enough of great about pablo aka dj smoke you gotta listen to his show every friday right here on ember radio live.com and listen to all the other great shows that we've got going on um i think that we're amazing family here and once again you know going back to omar i hope that you know this may have uh, got you to say hey what else was Omar on? And go through your records collections and see. This guy's been on everything. I mean, he's been on what half the records, maybe forty percent of all the re- freestyle records that there's been out there. And you know, realize that you know freestyle is about the vocalists and the groups and everything. But there's a whole production team. There's all these great engineers and the DJs who put it out there, and all these other people who put work into it too. We're all a freestyle family, and these people have made such a difference. And I hope that this show makes somewhat of a difference as well. And I hope that you've enjoyed it. And you know what? I'll see you next time.